Don't let Disney World fool you. We are exposing some of our new favorite secrets and hacks and killer tips for your next Disney vacation today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Planning a Disney World vacation can sometimes feel like Disney's getting the better of you. There are so many things to save up for, reservations to make, details that could slip through the cracks, while you may be attempting to create the perfect 2023 itinerary. But we've got a way to combat that with today's list of tips and hacks and secrets that'll help you outsmart Disney. Don't worry, we're gonna get through this together. This first tip has to do with you actually getting into the parks when you want to get into the parks. Yep, Park Pass reservations. Disney's Park Pass reservation system isn't necessarily complicated, but it can be a major pain in the you-know-where if you're trying to make reservations for a certain park and all the Park Passes have been snatched up for the day. Don't worry, all hope is not lost. You may have another Park Pass reservation calendar to look at instead. Let's look at the Theme Park Reservation Availability page on the Disney World website so you can see what I'm talking about here. When you go to the Park Reservation page, you're going to see a calendar with color-coded dates. Green is all the parks are available and ready to be booked. Yellow means some parks are available but some are already filled up and gray is no park availability for any park whatsoever. But notice that there are three different tabs above that calendar which list off three different calendar types. You've got a park pass reservation calendar for your standard theme park tickets, one for people staying in hotels on Disney property, and you've got one for people with annual passes. If you purchased a vacation package with your hotel and tickets bundled under one price, don't forget to check out both the standard theme park ticket and the select resort hotel calendar for park pass availability. Same thing if you're an annual pass holder and you're staying at a Disney hotel. Usually the hotel calendar is going to have more availability than the pass holder calendar. So check that hotel calendar and use your hotel reservation to get a theme park pass, even if your annual pass calendar is sold out. Because even if all the park passes are taken up on one calendar, there could still be availability listed on another. It's sneaky stuff. And if availability is all booked up on both calendars, calendars, check back again later. Disney refills availability often. Apparently they really can find more room to squeeze in guests as needed. Earlier in December for the week of Christmas, availability looked like it was all booked up solid for Magic Kingdom, but just a week later we suddenly saw Disney release a ton of park pass reservations for December 22nd and on through the 30th. In a case like this, go ahead and still buy your tickets in advance and book a park pass for a different park as a placeholder. Then if more park availability does happen to go live, you'll be able to quickly modify your park pass over to the park you want to visit. It'll be a Christmas miracle. Next tip for 2023, ride Splash Mountain one last time with minimum weights. It's the truth, it's actual, Splash Mountain is leaving Magic Kingdom on January 23rd to make way for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which will open in late 2024. And that means your last official day to ride this one will be January 22nd, which is creeping up. If you wanna ride Splash Mountain one last time, but the line is so incredibly long, what are you gonna do? Well, the straightforward answer is to just wait it out regardless, since it'll be the last time you'll ever get to do so. But if you don't go to Disney World all that often, wasting a whole lot of time in line for a ride that everyone and their mother is waiting to experience for a final plunge into the laughing place, then you're gonna need plan B. And maybe C or D. So first idea, rope drop the log flume. If you can get to Magic Kingdom right when the park opens or even earlier with your Disney World Hotel early theme park entry benefit, then you can get ahead of the afternoon crowds and be one of the first guests in line for this one at the start of the day. Just keep in mind that lots of folks will probably have the same idea and prioritize this ride first. So the earlier you can get yourself to Frontierland, the better. But here's a little caveat to this one that may make it even easier to ride at Rope Drop, riding when it's cold. No one wants to ride Splash Mountain, where you'll get bathtub soaked sometimes, when the weather is cold. So the lines are likely to be shorter during those Orlando cold streaks or early mornings in the winter. But even on warmer days that are still considered cool in Orlando, basically around 60 degrees, the lines for Splash Mountain, especially in those cooler mornings, are gonna be shorter. So all the more reason to set your alarm early for your Magic Kingdom day, especially if the temperatures are dipping. Now on a flip opposite side, you could wait to ride Splash Mountain during the Disney Enchantment fireworks show instead, since lots of guests will be gathering in and around Main Street USA to watch that nighttime spectacular. You may even be able to catch a glimpse of the fireworks while you're on the log flume ride so you can make your last ride through one that truly ends with a bang. And of course, you can grab a lightning lane for Splash Mountain. If you purchase Disney Genie Plus, which is a premium service that allows you to make lightning lane reservations to bypass the main queues for certain rides around the parks, then you need to grab a lightning lane for Splash Mountain first. Lightning lane selections go 
live at 7 a.m. daily for all Disney World Resort guests. So if you get up and around and book your Splash Mountain Lightning Lane first thing in the morning, you'll have a better chance of securing that reservation. Once again, it seems the early bird gets the last ride on Splash Mountain worm. That's how the phrase goes, right? Our next way to outsmart Disney in 2023 is knowing how to get critical information ASAP. Now, unfortunately, I won't always be here during your trip to feed tips and tricks in your ear, but there are people who will be on call for you 24 seven. If you've got questions, Disney cast members have answers, but sometimes getting on the phone with Disney or even chatting with a cast member through the My Disney Experience app can take a long time, too long if your park day is about to start. So what do you do? Well, a solution, or at least a partial solution, has been recently introduced. Disney World now has a virtual assistant feature within the Disney app chat function. To find it, open up your My Disney Experience app and make sure you've downloaded the latest app updates. Then tap the three lines to the bottom right, that hamburger button as some of us like to call it, and scroll down to where it says chat with us. Now, the chat with us feature isn't the new part here, it's the virtual assistant feature that's been added to it. When you navigate to the chat, you can type in an initial message, which will make a virtual assistant pop up. That virtual assistant presents a variety of topics you can ask about, like park hours, or rentals, and smoking areas. Or you can tap get a cast member to speak directly with a Disney employee. Remember how I said this was a partial solution? The virtual assistant function won't be able to answer every single question and not very specific ones, but it can be helpful to get some basic and sometimes critical information in a faster way than waiting for a cast member to be available via chat. Disney's basically making sure that the frequently asked questions can be answered by the virtual assistant. Now this next one is definitely something you're going to want to pay attention to. You want to visit before the prices increase again. Will you be able to beat the clock and schedule a Disney World vacation before the next wave of price increases arise? We can help you try. Disney World price increases feel never ending, but historically speaking, there's usually specific times of the year when Disney ups the cost of several items on their menus, their merchandise shelves, and their experiences. In 2022, we saw two huge batches of food price increases in January and October, and now I will note here that in the past we've seen across the board food price increases in October. That's pretty common. They didn't happen quite as drastically in 2020 or 2021 as Disney World was in the midst of that phased reopening, which could be the reason we saw two waves of price increases in 2022. We expect the trend of sweeping food price increases to keep with tradition and happen again in early October this year. Will these increases be major? Well, they usually aren't individually speaking, but adding 50 cents or a dollar onto every food item you buy to feed a family of four for seven days can require quite the increase in your budget for what's an already expensive vacation. For that reason, you want to avoid the waves of hundreds of price increases. Schedule your Disney World vacation before October if that makes sense for you and your group. This isn't always going to be a foolproof solution, so if you do end up traveling after a wave of price increases, then use these tips to take some of that added budgeting pressure off of you. Take advantage of happy hours. The Disney Springs restaurants have a ton of different happy hour specialties you can use for major food and drink savings. For example, at Frontera Cochina, you can stop by for Margarita Mondays and Tequila Tuesdays, enjoy $5 classic margaritas every Monday, and $5 shots of Tromba Blanco each Tuesday. Visiting on Wednesday, we've seen offerings like the $5 Ojo de Tigre Mezcal shot. And remember, Frontera Cocina has the same margaritas that you're going to find over at La Cava del Tequila, because it's the same group who's actually creating the menu there. Now, Haleo often offers specials like Sangria Hour and Vino Wednesdays featuring any bottle of wine for half price with dinner on Wednesdays. Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar has Happy Hour Monday through Friday from noon to 3 p.m., which features $6 to $7 wine and well drinks, $6 to $7 draft beers, and 8 and under appetizers. For even more Disney Springs dining discounts, check out the full list on our 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. That's now available over at dfbstore.com. Make sure to type in the code YouTube for some extra savings. You're also going to want to be prepared for sudden price changes. Just because it's not October doesn't mean Disney prices won't still change. Theme park prices are subject to change at any time, just maybe not hundreds all at once. If you're sticking to a tight budget, be sure to keep that in mind as you plan your trip and maybe leave in some emergency funds to use in case prices go up or something unexpected happens. And don't miss the discounts. If you join the DFB newsletter, I can send you every discount we find, including food, flights, hotel tickets, you name it, straight to your inbox. The newsletter's free and you can sign up for 
for it at any time. I'll add the sign up link in the description below. Another awesome way to outsmart Disney is using this buffet hack that we've used for a long time. Even if you're not big on the breakfast scene, you're gonna wanna know this trick that we rarely talk about. If you've got reservations for a Disney buffet restaurant that serves both breakfast and lunch, like Crystal Palace and Magic Kingdom and Tusker House and Animal Kingdom, make a late breakfast reservation that bleeds into lunch. Not only will this give you a lower dining rate since breakfast prices tend to be cheaper than lunch and dinner, but you'll also be able to take advantage of both breakfast and lunch options. For example, in 2022, we had a Crystal Palace reservation for 10.25 a.m. Breakfast options were available until 10.45, but the buffet offerings switched over to lunch by 11, meaning you have two different dining experiences under one reservation at the cheaper price range. If that isn't an ultimate dining hack, I don't know what is. And don't forget to look for sales inside the park. There are multiple ways to get Disney World merchandise at a cheaper price. You've got ShopDisney.com sales, you got Disney outlet stores, you've got the Disney character warehouses in the Orlando outlets, like the Orlando Outlet Marketplace off International Drive and the Orlando Vineland Premium Outlets off Vineland Avenue. But rare sales also pop up directly in the Disney World gift shops from time to time. Gift shop sales tend to happen most often in Epcot at the end of festivals when there's still leftover merch merchandise Disney needs to get rid of, but sometimes sales happen toward the end of the holidays too for the exact same reason. This year we saw Uptown Jewelers and Magic Kingdom have a major sale on their designer bags. Several holiday satchels, totes, and wallets were 30% off, which was also a deal that carried over to the Shop Disney site too. And we didn't see deals just on accessories. They appeared on toys too, like the Castle Play set, which is normally $124.99, but was marked down to just $75. Sales on Disney Parks merch will appear more often on the Shop Disney website, but it's always worth keeping your eyes open for potential in-shop sales too. You'll know a sale is happening on certain items when you see more magic signs placed next to the gaggle of discounted souvenirs. Now, of course, we need some Genie Plus tips in here to outsmart Disney. And the first one is to play the Genie Plus modification game. Disney Genie Plus has experienced several growing pains since it was first launched in 2021, but the most recent Genie Plus changes have been for the better. Genie Plus now allows guests to modify their Lightning Lane selections after they're already made, meaning you don't have to straight up cancel any Lightning Lane reservations you already have if you find a return time for a different ride that works better with your schedule. If you want to modify your lightning lane after you've already made your selection, just open the My Disney Experience app and tap on the reservation. This will make a little box pop up at the bottom of our screen. From there, you can add someone to your lightning lane, cancel the reservation, view my day, or modify it. Once you select modify plan, you'll be directed to a new screen filled with options. On this screen, you can select a new time for your lightning lane, but you can also choose from a variety of other times for other attractions as well, which adds a whole lot more flexibility to the process since you don't have to cancel and rebook. Another big benefit for being able to modify a lightning lane reservation instead of flat out canceling is that this doesn't reset the 120 minute rule. What is this magical rule you may be asking? Well, if you book a lightning lane return time and it's for way later on in the day, you can make a second Genie Plus lightning lane choice once 120 20 minutes have passed. This rule only starts once the park's officially open for the day, so if you book your first lightning lane at 7 a.m. on the dot, you're not gonna be able to make another lightning lane until 9 a.m. But don't worry, I know that's confusing. Your My Disney Experience app will let you know on the top of your screen what time exactly you'll be able to book your next lightning lane. Once upon a time, if you canceled your current lightning lane in exchange for another, that 120 minute countdown would start over. But now that you can modify your selection, your 120 minutes will not reset, even if you choose a new ride for those line bypassing privileges. Note, currently this change only applies to lightning lanes booked through Genie Plus, so you can apply those same modifications to the individual lightning lanes you pay for a la carte, like at Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in Magic Kingdom, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot, Rise of the Resistance in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Flight of Passage in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Once you've booked one of those, you won't be able to modify those, since you'll be able to choose your return time for individual lightning lanes in the first place. Now, for you character hunters out there, let's figure out how to meet the rare princesses. Why meet just a couple of your favorite princesses during your Disney World trip when you have the potential of meeting so many more? To get a chance of meeting rare princesses who aren't always in the parks every day, you've got three options. One, you can find the visiting princess. If you want to visit Disney princesses, you can typically meet Elena, Tiana, Rapunzel, and Cinderella at Princess Fairy Tale Hall in Magic Kingdom, but sometimes a special visiting princess is there instead. You'll know when a different princess 
princess is visiting based on the sign outside the fairy tale hall building. If you see a crown instead of a character, you'll know a rare princess is frequenting the hall that day. Number two, learn who's meeting and greeting from the My Disney Experience app. In the My Disney Experience app, you can see which characters are available for sightings and meet and greets, as well as the length of their standby wait times by checking out the Disney attractions and shows tip board. That way, you don't have to guess who's gonna be there the day of your visit. You can know as soon as your day in the park begins. Simply put, keep your eyes open. Sometimes we're pleasantly surprised by the rare princesses we just so happen to stumble upon. Back in December, we were at Magic Kingdom and headed over to the area near the Curtain Call Shop, which is where Snow White often greets guests, but instead of Snow White, we spotted Mulan. Now, I love seeing Snow White, but we rarely ever get to see Mulan roaming around Main Street USA, meeting and greeting with guests, so this was quite the surprise. A cast member told us that Mulan and Snow White would now be alternating their meet and greets in that location, so keep an eye out for Mulan when you're in Magic Kingdom, as well as any other surprise visitors that might show up. Now, Fantasmic is back in Disney's Hollywood Studios, but it's also extremely popular. For good reason. Lots of changes have been made to this nighttime spectacular, but the biggest difference is the addition of a brand new sequence in the show. This sequence takes you on a journey with our heroes and features new characters, stunt performers, and animations. So how can you absolutely guarantee the very best view of this performance? Well consider purchasing a Fantasmic Dining Package. The Fantasmic Dining Package offers a meal at a participating restaurant in Disney's Hollywood Studios and reserved seating of a showing of, you guessed it, Fantasmic. You can choose from 50's Primetime Cafe, Mama Melrose's Ristorante Italiano, Hollywood and Vine, Sci-Fi Dine and Theater, or the Hollywood Brown Derby for the dining package. Each restaurant choice includes a voucher for reserved seating for a Fantasmic evening show, which you'll get at the time of your meal. Prices vary depending on which restaurant you choose, but your cheapest option will be lunch at Sci-Fi Dine-In for $49 per person, and your most expensive will be Hollywood Brown Derby Dinner for $73 per person. You can book a dining package on the Disney World website or by calling 407-WDW-DINE. If you're not looking to drop a whole lot of extra moolah on a dining package, though, try getting in line for Fantasmic 20 to 30 minutes before the show begins for a better chance at prime seating, which will be the center of the bleachers and the middle of the amphitheater. Also, if there is a second showing of Fantasmic the day of your visit, choose to see the second show over the first. Lots of guests are going to prioritize the first show, either because they have to leave the park and get the kids to bed, or because they don't know there's a second show, meaning you'll likely see the theater less packed out during the second performance of the night. So when exactly does Fantasmic have one versus two show times listed on the schedule? From January 15th to February 26th, which is as far as the calendar goes per the release of this video, there is only one showing of Fantasmic at 8 p.m. each night. But during busier times of the year, like we saw at the end of November, throughout December, and from January 1st to January 14th, there were two showings for Fantasmic each night. You can check for future dates and show times via the entertainment schedule featured on the Disney World website. All right, it's time to find an easier way to buy those exclusive popcorn buckets. If you're part of the Disney popcorn bucket fandom, or you know someone who's been part of this niche fan club for a while now, I'm about to reveal an absolute game changer for y'all. Instead of standing in a forever long line for your must-have holy grail of popcorn buckets, you might be able to mobile order them instead. Some exclusive popcorn bucket releases are either A, available on mobile order, or B, listed as a mobile order purchase only. To mobile order a popcorn bucket, Bucket, you should be able to treat this purchase like you would any other food purchase. Just tap on the mobile food order section in your My Disney Experience app and choose a return time for the popcorn bucket souvenir release. You may also be able to find a QR code outside the restaurant. Scan that and it'll take you right to the section you need to be at to place your bucket order. This isn't going to be the case for all popcorn bucket releases, but many of the limited releases recently have been following this mobile order pattern, probably due to Figment last year. So once you know where to find an exclusive popcorn bucket in the parks, double check and see how you'll be able to purchase it after that. Now we're back to hotels for this next point. How about new hotels and free breakfast? The Drury Plaza Hotel Orlando in Disney Springs is now open and you can book there. This is a new place to stay. It's located right next to Disney Springs and is an official Disney Good Neighbor Hotel. Just half a mile from Disney Springs, it's got free shuttle service to all four Disney World theme parks and it's also eligible for early theme park entry. There's also free hot breakfast every morning, which you know I'm never gonna turn down, plus a free 5.30 p.m. kickback, meaning you'll have access 
to evening snacks and cold beverages. Now we have not stayed here, so we're not necessarily recommending it, but prices for the Drury Plaza Hotel range depending on when you visit and what type of room you choose. But they typically cost around the same price you pay for a value resort that's owned by Disney. So you wanna weigh the pros and cons and think about a good neighbor hotel to maybe outsmart Disney on those $600 plus per night deluxe resorts. Now, you can also consider an airport other than the Orlando International Airport. With flights being as hectic as they've been lately, you're gonna wanna make sure your airport experience goes as smoothly as possible before your big Disney vacay. So is the Orlando International Airport really the best airport to fly in and out of for your Disney World vacation? Or should you be going for a smaller airport like Orlando Sanford International Airport? Now, this is definitely a pros and cons situation. You gotta see what's gonna work for your particular flights, your transportation needs, and your airline. So flying into Sanford is generally gonna be cheaper than flying into Orlando because most of the available airlines here are considered to be budget airlines. So budget airlines equals lower costs. You can save as much as $150 on your flight into Sanford versus into Orlando, which means more money in your pocket to spend on the rest of your Disney World vacation. But you may be turning around and spending that savings on transportation to Disney World. More on that in a second. In terms of family friendliness, consider this. Orlando Airport has three terminals, but around 100 different gates. The airport is big and parts of it are relatively spread out. There are only two terminals at Sanford and the airport isn't as spread out as MCO. Sanford also offers special kids programming and the option for shorter security lines, plus some spots to grab a quick bite to eat, of course. So for its smaller size, Sanford might be easier to navigate with kids. However, Orlando International Airport is one of the largest in the United States, so it totally makes sense there would be a wider variety of flight options and more availability than a smaller airport like Sanford. Currently, MCO services 44 airlines, meaning there are far fewer airlines flying in and out of Sanford. Allegiant Air, Flair Airlines, and Swoop Air are the only three commercial options to choose from when flying in and out of this airport. So if none of these three airlines flies to an airport near you, that pretty much eliminates SFB as an option. Not to mention from MCO, you're looking at a 24 mile or 30 minute drive on average. As long as traffic isn't a huge issue, which it might be on those main roads, especially during rush hour, a half hour drive isn't too shabby to get to the most magical place on earth. Sanford, on the other hand, is located on the north side of Orlando and is about 50 miles from Magic Kingdom. Because of this, your trip to and from the airport is going to take closer to an hour. And of course, MCO does have the convenience factor trump card to play here. When flying into MCO, you have not one but two shuttle options to take you to Disney World. Although the free Magical Express is gone, you can still book a premium trip with Mirrors Connect or Sunshine Flyer. Transportation at SFB isn't quite as convenient since it's around an hour away. You can always rent a car, but then you'd have to factor in paying for parking at your Disney World hotel. Mirrors Connect and the Sunshine Flyer don't operate out of this airport, although several private shuttle services do, but they're typically more expensive than the options at MCO. Rideshare services are also an option here, but they can run about 60 plus each way, depending on the time of day in service. So it really just depends on what you want to prioritize here. Sanford's cheaper flights and easy to navigate airport may be a better fit for you and your travel group, but if you still want Disney transportation convenience and more airline options, you might be better off sticking with MCO. Our next way to outsmart Disney in 2023 is to carry some cash. Best be thinking twice before you go completely paperless on your next Disney World vacation. It could actually help you save money in the long run. According to a report from CNBC, there's a big psychological factor when it comes to paying for things with cash versus paying for them with credit card. That's because if you're using cash, you can visualize the amount you're actually spending. But when you're just mindlessly swiping a card, it's easier for your funds to be out of sight, out of mind. So for your next Disney World trip or really any future vacation you plan on taking, Save a certain amount of physical cash for your souvenirs and extra purchases. That way you can keep track of what you're paying for. And once the cash is gone, it's gone. No more extra splurges. But note that it's because of this that a lot of theme parks are trying to go completely cashless because they know you're going to spend more if you don't pay with cash. Now, this is one of my favorite ways to outsmart Disney in 2023, upgrading your food for just a dollar. One whole dollar is going to unlock a whole world of flavors. You just need to know where to look. So let's talk about five different $1 upgrades you can add to your meals to make them 10 times better. 
First, of course, we're gonna talk about plastic cheese. Was there any question that plastic cheese wouldn't show up in this video somewhere? I do love a cup of ooey gooey, probably not totally real food, liquid cheese to add to most of my savory snacks. Mickey pretzel, cheese. French fries, cheese. Corn dog nuggets, cheese. And it's usually only a dollar. And we're not done with melty cheese options yet. Our next upgrade is queso. At Pecos Bills in Magic Kingdom and La Cantina de San Angel in Epcot's Mexico Pavilion, you can get a side of queso for a dollar too. This sauce is more of a queso so Blanco has a bit more flavor than the plastic cheese, but don't tell plastic cheese I said that. But we haven't found it to be overly spicy or anything, just nice, cheesy, and savory. Number three is chocolate sauce. For those of you looking for a sweeter snack for just a dollar, grab a side of chocolate sauce for your Mickey pretzel or churro. You can find sides of warm chocolatey goodness at most popcorn and churro stands throughout the parks. And yes, I did say get it for your Mickey pretzel. I love having both cheese and chocolate for my Mickey pretzel, not at the same time, but I do dip both. Number four is a cup of frosting. If you wanna upgrade that sweetness even higher, our next $1 snack comes from Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs, and it's a whole extra container's worth of that thick and sugary frosting. Okay, this one's cheating a little bit because it's actually $1.50 add-on, but the extra 50 cents is still worth it. When we visited in the past, they've had both peanut butter and vanilla frosting available to buy, and yes, you can dip your Gideon's cookie into these tubs of goodness, but you can also just eat it straight up, speaking from personal experience, of course. And the grilled cheese donut. If you're wanting a sweet and savory combo, this next dollar enhancement could be calling your name. Over at Everglazed Donuts and Cold Brew in Disney Springs, you can order a regular grilled cheese sandwich, but for one dollar more, you can get it on donut buns. Yep, that's what I said, donut buns. And why stop there? For another dollar, you can add bacon to the sandwich too and be in comfort food heaven. Okay, how about buying a Disney Parks shirt without actually buying a shirt at the parks? Confused? You won't be. If you want to rep some unique threads in Disney World or Disneyland, but you don't want to have a shirt that everyone else is going to be wearing too, we have an entire line of Disney food blog t-shirts that you're going to fall in love with. These shirts advertise your favorite snacks, attractions, parks, and favorite times of the year to visit. Not to mention each design is also available in different sizing options and various colors and styles. So if you want a plastic cheese sweatshirt, but your friend wants plastic cheese tea, both styles are available. Yes, we have plastic cheese merch, okay? I just really love that fake golden goodness. Like, a lot. Now let's return to the mobile order scene for the next Outsmart Disney in 2023 tip because it really is one of the most convenient ways to get food and drinks at Disney World in a jiffy. If you need a Starbucks pick me up, I've got some good and bad news for you. Bad news first to get it out of the way, you can't mobile order Starbucks items from the Starbucks locations inside the parks, nor will you be able to use your Starbucks rewards points at these places either. Now for the good news, you can mobile order Starbucks from the actual Starbucks storefronts in Disney Springs and use your rewards here as well. There are two Starbucks locations you can hit up in the Disney Springs shopping district. One is at the Disney Springs Marketplace, close to the World of Disney gift shop. The other is on the west side, across from the Disney Style and Star Wars Galactic Outpost stores. And bonus secret for you. If you go to the west side Starbucks location, don't forget to interact with the touchscreen chalkboard inside the building. This little immersive part of the store lets you interact with downtown Disney guests all the way over at the Disneyland Starbucks in California, because it really is a small world after all. All right, the next thing you can do to outsmart Disney in 2023 is get complimentary souvenirs. Now, you're not cheating Disney out of anything. These are always free and you can always get them and they actually like when you get them because that means you're more engaged and invested in your trip and they put these things out there for that reason. So no stress about that. And there are lots of ways to get free Disney souvenirs before the end of your trip. So let's list off a few right now. Disney's I'm celebrating buttons have long been a favorite freebie. Just stop by a guest relations location at the parks or your resort resort's front desk, ask for a button, and the cast members there will hook you up. When you take free Disney transportation too, ask for a free collectible transportation card. Bus drivers, monorail drivers, and other cast members who work in transportation around the boats and the Skyliner, monorail, and buses will often have these cards. There are more than two dozen different cards to collect, so see how many you can stock up on before the end of your trip. And if you want some free soda, don't forget to hit up Club Cool in Epcot where you can sample different soda flavors from around the world. This is not a free pass to fill up your refill bottle with soda though. These are just the little cups. And adventurous kids can collect Wilderness Explorer badges around Disney's Animal Kingdom. The whole Wilderness Explorer's Guide is a totally free handbook that you can pick up from any of the troop leader locations in the park. Then you can embark on a scavenger hunt with little tasks to perform at various stations throughout the park in order to receive badges. And though this last one isn't technically free, it's still a fun addition to go along with your kid's meal purchase. Restaurantosaurus in Disney's Animal Kingdom is currently offering books with the purchase of a kid's meal. You'll get your choice of two sides along with a National Geographic book about dinosaurs. 
Again, technically not free, but Space 220 has its own trading cards, which have custom illustrations and trivia facts about space exploration, food in space, and sky-high innovations at Space 220. These trading cards come with every kid's meal at Space 220, or if you're an adult who wants to collect these freebies too, the trading cards also come with zero-proof cocktails, the specialty non-alcoholic drinks in the restaurant. But the free stuff doesn't stop there. We got a whole video out now listing the 50 free things you can do in Disney World, which you can check out after we wrap up here. Now, we want you to pay less for a bigger room. Let's say you need some more hotel space for your travel group and you really want to stay in a DVC suite or villa. Trust me, I know the feeling all too well. Unfortunately, those bigger Disney Vacation Club rooms mean much bigger price tags. And if you're not a Disney Vacation Club member, you're going to have to pay a lot of money out of pocket for one of these suites or villas. So how can you cut down on those hefty price tags and get that extra elbow room for less cha-ching? Well, we got a couple solutions for you. First up, book a room at Disney's Old Key West resort. Now that's not something we recommend every day. Disney's Old Key West is a Disney Vacation Club resort that's rarely ever talked about. Not because it's a bad place, but because it serves a different purpose than the other resorts on property. Instead of feeling like a hotel stay, it's meant to feel like a tropical home away from home. It also happens to be the original Disney Vacation Club resort, so many guests who book rooms here have been DVC members for a very long time and have built a community around this resort. That being said, everyone's welcome to book a room here, and because this deluxe resort is a bit older and doesn't have quite the transportation conveniences that the other deluxe resorts have, like the ones along the monorail loop for instance, it also has bigger hotel rooms that you can book at a much cheaper price point because once Disney started selling those DVC memberships, it started to shrink the DVC rooms. But because OKW was the first DVC resort, it's grandfathered in those big rooms. A one bedroom villa sleeps up to five adults and comes with a full kitchen, multiple bathrooms, and a separate bedroom and living room area. And the square footage is much bigger than one bedroom villas you're going to find at other DVC locations. And these are priced around $600 per night during non-peak season. Now for comparison's sake, because I know that sounds like a lot, a standard room at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, meaning one room, two beds, one bathroom, basically your tiny hotel room, usually won't dip under $630 per night, even during less busy times of the year. So full kitchen, multiple bathrooms, separate bedroom and living room area for $600, that's a pretty decent deal. Now let's be real here, $600 is still a lot of money, but you can save more on a resort stay by renting those Disney Vacation Club points. So this is how this works. DVC memberships are a timeshare. Though Disney's program can be more flexible than other timeshare programs, there's still the potential of losing your vacation points if you don't use them within a certain amount of time. And that's a big waste of money if you're a Disney Vacation Club member. So if DVC members are unable to use their points before they expire, they may turn to a third-party Disney Vacation Club rental site like David's DVC Rentals to try to gain some of their money back. That means non-DVC members can rent out a DVC room using a DVC member's points that they found for rent. And that can help them potentially save hundreds on their upcoming stay. Because the amount of dollars you pay for point is going to add up to a lot less than what you would have to pay if you were booking that Disney Vacation Club room yourself. Now, I know that sounds like a win-win situation, and for the most part, it is. But there are a few catches when it comes to renting through a third-party site instead of booking directly through Disney. Like how cancellations and upgrades and date modifications are not allowed. The David's DVC rental site notes that you might want to consider adding travel insurance to your trip to protect against unexpected situations. To learn more about the pros and cons of DVC rentals, we've got a video on it, the Disney World Hotel Secret that could save you hundreds. That'll give you some more info, and it really, really is a good deal for most folks looking for a bigger room for less money. All right, you feel that? Those are the Disney smarts pulsing through your brain. Now that you've watched today's video, go forth, my friends, and use your newfound wealth of knowledge to concoct the best Disney World trip ever. And of course, we are going to be here for you, sharing our updates, the news, all of our mistakes, because we keep making mistakes every single day when we go to Disney World. And it's our job to share those with you so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. So thanks for listening and thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when we put up new videos. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.